A few weeks ago, I published a short review on this near-field probe set made by Triarchy. It came in that little box up there. At the time I did that, I knew that it would be a good idea to have a low-noise amplifier to use with these. And in fact, a lot of the competitive probe sets offer a low noise amplifier that uh, you can buy from the same manufacturer. I don't think Triarchy sells uh, an LNA for this, but the at the time I had this mini circuits low noise amplifier. It's a ZFL 1000 LN which goes from uh, 0.1 megahertz to a thousand megahertz and I could have used that. I decided not to and instead I ordered some uh, additional low noise amplifiers, a, a pair of them from many circuits. The reason I didn't want to use this one is one of the reasons I bought this near field probe set is to do interference uh, analysis on Wi-Fi systems and for that I needed a little more uh, bandwidth. The, the ZFL 1000 only goes to a thousand megahertz which of course as you know is not high enough for uh, Wi-Fi. So what I wound up buying are these two mini circuits and I'll show you the specs on them in a little bit. And the reason that I bought these two is both of these go to at least 3000 megahertz. And I'll show you the data sheets when I uh, hook each one up. I'll show them to you individually. But I'm now going to hook up the uh, this the first mini circuits to the Siglent power supply that I recently talked about in connection with that Velman amplifier kit. So let me show you the setup that I have and what I'm trying to accomplish and then we'll get to the spec sheet on this amplifier and then we'll move on and try this second one. Here is the setup that I'm using to begin with. This is an Instec GSP730. It's a 3 gigahertz spectrum analyzer that I've talked a lot about in some previous videos. and. Its input is connected to a, a low noise amplifier, which is right over there. That is a mini circuits uh, low noise amplifier, actually wideband amplifier. It goes uh, from about 50 megahertz, if I remember right, all the way up to 6 gigahertz. It's intended to be very wide band, and one reason I bought that one is so that I will have an amplifier that works in the 5.8 uh, gigahertz range as well as the uh, 2.4. But for this experiment, what I'm really trying to do, do is determine the effectiveness of using these uh, Triarchy near field probes that you see right here. So, I'm using the Triarchy generator, and it's connected to a small uh, Wi-Fi or ISM antenna. This is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. And then you see the near-field probe is just hooked around it. Let's go back and look at the uh, uh, spectrum display, though. And by the way, the Triarchy is putting out a 2.4 gigahertz single frequency signal at about uh, at minus 30 uh, dBm into the antenna. Here is the spectrum that I'm getting. Now if I turn off the Triarchy you'll see that the 2.4 gigahertz signal that is at the exact center of the screen disappears but these other signals continue. Now those other signals are Wi-Fi signals and other ISM signals in the area. The uh, Currently the span is set to uh, 
Well, it starts at 2.2 gigahertz on this side and goes to 2.6 gigahertz on that side. So uh, you can see there's a fair amount of Wi-Fi activity. Now what I'm going to do, uh, and one of the reasons that I wanted to sort of calibrate this is to find out with a minus 30 dBm signal what sort of level you'd see with this particular triarchy. Now you'll notice that we have uh, pretty good sized signals there and I'm going to be holding this up near my wireless router and you notice that on occasion it really spikes. There's a really big one. So so why am I doing all of this? Well, one of the things that I want to be able to do is to look at signals that might be interfering with Wi-Fi. And I know that there are uh, units that, or software that will run on PCs with Wi-Fi, but the problem is that they only detect other Wi-Fi uh, adapters, other routers and uh, access points. They don't detect things like microwave ovens and other sources of uh, radiation in the 2.4 gigahertz range. They also don't detect wireless phones that operate in that region or a lot of other equipment. So part of what I'm going to be doing is that, but uh, let me show you the specs on this amplifier that I'm using and then I'll switch to another type of amplifier and we'll see how that performs. This is the wideband amplifier for mini circuits that I'm using. It's called a ZX60-V63+. It operates on 5 volts. As they say, it has high gain and broadband. Uh, it operates from 50 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. It's a pretty good amplifier, particularly for that broad frequency range. However, it is not low noise. And we'll look at a low-noise amplifier here in a minute. So, look down here at what they say are the key features, and I'll just zoom in on those a little bit. It says typical uh, 21 dB gain at 50 megahertz, and about 15 dB at 6 gigahertz. I have found that the gain in the mid-band, that is at around 2.4 to 3 gigahertz, is uh, a little over 20 dB. So pretty good, pretty good amplifier as they uh, talk about. Its main feature is it's so broadband. It does have a pretty good third order intercept point, at least for, for an amplifier of this width. Uh, but for this application, that is 2.4 gigahertz, it actually is a little too wideband. In fact, one of the things that I'm considering doing is adding a high-pass filter to cut out all of the signals below about 250 megahertz because there are a lot of th signals in those bands that will overload low-noise amplifiers. But before we go there, let's take a look at the next type of amplifier that I bought. And it's a little more suited to what we're doing here. This is the ZX60 hyphen P103LN plus for many circuits. The main thing that this amplifier has, in addition to a 3000 megahertz upper frequency range. The lower is the same as the one we just looked at, 50 megahertz. It only goes to 3000 megahertz. I haven't tested it. I'm going to actually take a look at where this begins to fall off uh, in a little bit. But the big thing is the ultra low noise figure. Uh, half a dB typical. This is incredibly low noise. This is uh, an amplifier that's often used by amateurs to receive very weak satellite signals. Uh, it's got excellent noise performance. And it also has high dynamic range, which means that the third order intercept point is good. In fact, it's better in this frequency range than the one we just looked at. So 
Now this one is a little bit more expensive than the one we just looked at. This one I think I paid $70 for and the one we just looked at was $50. Now I've connected up the uh, low noise or the uh, 103LN uh, mini circuits amplifier exactly the same as before using the same power supply as before uh, 5 volts. Let's take a look at what it draws in terms the the other one drew about 60 milliamps. Let's see what this one draws. Okay it draws about 80 milliamps. So now let's take a look at the uh, spectrum And here is the spectrum. Once again, the using the near field probe right over the antenna. You may notice that it's roughly the same as the one we saw earlier. The uh, signal to the right there that keeps popping in and out, those are Wi-Fi signals. The one in the center is the triarchy. Let me turn that RF off now and you see it disappears but the Wi-Fi continues to come and go. So that's the first part. Now what I'm going to do, since part of the purpose of this was to determine the usefulness of the uh, Triarchy near field probes, I'm going to change to the other probe but I'm going to continue to use this amplifier, that is the other Triarchy, uh, there, there are four, but I'm going to use the other loop probe this is with the uh, smaller Triarchy uh, near field probe, that is the smaller loop probe. I had to change the reference level. I had to make the spectrum analyzer uh, 10 dB more sensitive in order to get approximately the same size on the, uh, the reference signal. I'm using the Triarchy as a reference signal because obviously you can't be sure uh, these Wi-Fi signals are coming from everywhere. I've got neighbors on both sides, that, some within uh, 20 or 30 feet, uh, some 200 feet away or so, some across the street and so on. So a variety of signals plus the signals that my system, which also includes uh, several access points uh, and, other, and other signals, so quite a bit of variability. But I had to increase the sensitivity and the reason for that is these smaller probes of course obviously pick up a lot less. These are magnetic probes and a magnetic probe works on a loop. That is magnetic, a magnetic field has to pass through the loop to induce a voltage that you can read. I'm going to hold this up near my Wi-Fi router again and you see we can get quite a bit of, uh, of signal but don't be fooled remember this is 10 dB more sensitive than the first time I did this with the large probe. Now I'm going to change to an E-field probe. and Here's what I get with the uh, first of the E-field probes. I'm going to turn the Triarchy off now. And you see we're not getting quite as much signal from the uh, Wi-Fi. Now let me move this up, the probe up near the, in approximately the same location I was in earlier, near the Wi-Fi uh, router. And you see it's not as much as we were getting, especially nowhere near as much as we were getting on the H-field probe or the H-field probes. Now let me change to the uh, other, uh, by the way that's uh, so you can get an idea of what an E-field probe looks like. This is an E-field probe. And here is with the smallest E-field probe and I have it sitting over here almost touching the antenna. There we are with the 2.4 gigahertz. But let me come up here near the Wi-Fi access point and you see it's working pretty well there as well. 
the the last thing that I want to do and remember I'm not trying to get absolute measurements here I just want some relative readings the last thing I'm going to do is put a an antenna on the uh, uh, low noise amplifier and see what it does with regard to 2.4 gigahertz and here is with the antenna connected and right next to the uh, the transmitting antenna what I'm using is this small Wi-Fi antenna I'm not sure that this is actually tuned to 2.4 gigahertz I think it might actually be tuned to a lower frequency because it's it's a bit longer and larger than the typical Wi-Fi antenna but let's hold it up here near the Wi-Fi access point and see what we get well we get we get some what I've oh there's a good strong one what I've pretty much determined is that the H-field probes do a pretty good job particularly that larger H-field probe but it's not a lot better than the uh, than just using an antenna the uh, I'm going to go on doing some more experiments along this line but basically the reason I made this video was to show how you might go about using a low noise amplifier to get better sensitivity on a spectrum analyzer at some point in the future I want to repeat these experiments with the signal hound spectrum analyzer and the reason for that is one of the nice things about that analyzer is it is portable and you can use it with a tablet or a small uh, laptop or whatever and go around go out in the field with it so for detecting things like microwave radiation and uh, other things that might be a useful alternative but I basically wanted to get a baseline for how sensitive these triarchy near field probes are with these mini circuits low noise amplifiers. I have now connected up the signal hound uh, SA44B and what you see on the screen is a max hole trace. The center frequency is 2.465 gigahertz. Uh, it's spanning about 30 megahertz, which is uh, covers the uh, the basic Wi-Fi portion of the ISM band. And I'm using the E-field probe. The reference level is the same as I was using on the NSTEC, that is minus 30 dBm. The resolution bandwidth is the same. So basically, this uh, what this shows is that actually the without the low noise amplifier, the NSTEC is less sensitive than the signal hound at these frequencies. Now, the uh, that doesn't surprise me. The NSTEC does not contain a low noise amplifier. The Rigol that I have does contain a low noise amplifier, but it will only go to one and a half gigahertz. So the only two options that I have presently for this frequency band are the NSTEC and the signal hound. But at any rate, this is the uh, uh, using the E-field probe located right next to my Wi-Fi router. This is another sweep or another uh, max hold run. I only point this out because I noticed that the signal hound is able to cover this span in 390 to 400 milliseconds. And the NSTEC, this isn't trying to be a review or a comparison, I've kind of reviewed both of these instruments before, but it takes the NSTEC four and a half seconds at the same settings. That is a resolution bandwidth of 100 kilohertz, uh, a uh, step of 10 megahertz and uh, a span of 40 uh, megahertz centered on 2.46 gigahertz. So uh, just a little aside before I move on and I think the next little segment I'm going to try the same thing first with the probe laying down on my bench 
and then I'm going to fire up that Cisco router we saw before and see what we get on that. And here is the signal hound with the probe simply laid on the bench. I'll show you the configuration in a second. But I wanted to point out something that I hadn't mentioned so far. One of the reasons that I use, that I like to use 100 kilohertz with the signal hound particularly is, or at least in resolution bandwidth no greater than 100 kilohertz, is it takes 250 kilohertz uh, swaths. In other words, it, it looks at a, a segment of, of uh, bandwidth 250 kilohertz wide. It's not like a real-time uh, spectrum analyzer like their uh, B, BB660C, I think it is, which will take, I think, 25 megahertz at a time. But the reason I point that out is, <clears throat> since it only takes uh, a 250 kilohertz segment, and since Wi-Fi signals are uh, occur r uh, fairly randomly, the you, uh, you have to use max hole to build up much of a picture, and it'll only capture something if it happens to be within the capture range of the instrument at the time that signal is active. That is that that segment of this band. So I'm sure that. Uh, anyone watching this, particularly anyone that's lasted this long, already understands all of this, but I just thought I would point it out that I am using 100 kilohertz for uh, for a specific reason, and that is that that allows the spectrum analyzer to overlap. In other words, it's capturing 250 megahertz, but it's I'm only uh, sampling the power in 100 kilohertz of that, so effectively it's about a two and a half to one overlap. And here is where I have the probe laying now, next to this Cisco router. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the Cisco router, or plug it in, and of course this is a Wi-Fi and let's look at what happens on the screen here. Well, there seems to be little, if any, additional activity from that Cisco, uh, from powering on that Cisco router. Let me see if... Well, I don't get much of anything there, so and the router is up and active now. It has gone through its uh, initialization sequence. So let me now change to the H-field probe and see what happens there. Here is the background of the H-field probe. Now remember, an H-field probe is picking up the electromagnetic portion of the, uh, the EH field. So it, it's not shielded as much as the E-field. And also the capture area of this large H-field probe, the loop area, is quite a bit bigger than the uh, capture area of the E-field probe. So this is, you get quite a bit of background and it, at uh, a considerably higher amplitude. Now I'm going to turn on the wireless router and I'm going to uh, restart the sweep. And there you see we have a lot of activity from the Cisco router. And, and remember, this router is an 802.11n. 
and the one we were looking at earlier, that is the one that I use for most of my, uh, for my general wireless network is an AN. So it's, uh, it has a different set of frequencies, uh, just slightly different protocol. It, it will do, it will connect with this router uh, or this Wi-Fi uh, system, but it doesn't do the same thing. But notice how the, uh, now there's a good deal of noise, and part of that's because I have the probe right under the Cisco router. Let me move it off a little bit and rerun. So that it's picking up pretty much the radiated signal and not the actual noise of the board. In other words, I had the probe under the router as I turned it on and it picks up a lot of noise off the board when you do that. So now it's separated by about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the router and we'll let it accumulate and then I'll come back. And you see that we're getting a a pretty fair amount of activity, including some down there near the uh, near the start. I've widened the band the span to 100 megahertz because there is a uh, uh, the difference in the characteristics of a G router, an N router, and an AN router. They use different parts of the ISM band in different ways, but uh, you can essentially disregard the signal at the far left. But the part that is new that the Cisco router has added is this part here. This is, as you probably remember, basically the background noise from the other routers in my neighborhood, including my own. Uh, and then this is what the Cisco router has added. This is actually uh, a little bit of an artifact uh, because a system started up that uh, actually uses uh, a different Wi-Fi or ISM, a part of the ISM band. But basically, you see what I'm trying to accomplish here. So here is the orientation of the H-Field probe with the Cisco router uh, running in idle mode. There's nothing, there's no traffic going over this wireless router at this point. But uh, it gives you an idea of the proximity and the one thing I have not tried so far are the uh, low noise amplifiers with the signal hound. I'm going to postpone that till sometime in the future and only use those if I find that I actually need them. But I hope that this video has been of some use to uh, to, to most of you, if you've lasted this long, you must have more interest in this than the average person. At any rate, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, I'm doing this more for my own background information rather than anything else to just get familiar with the equipment and how the uh, near-field probes react. But if you have some suggestions or comments, questions, etc., well, uh, please leave them in the comments section. And in the meantime, have a nice day.